Hello, my name is Sammy Valencia, and today I'll be talking about the history of Atari. Now, Atari's history can be broken up into three different major sections of its life. Uh, it started off as Atari Inc. in 1972 with the development of Pong, and then later was sold and its name changed to Atari Corporation. And then in 1996, it finally was sold again and became Atari Interactive, and at this point it no longer produced electronics and was strictly a name used by whoever owned its patents and rights to produce video games. Now, originally, in 1972, when Atari Incorporated was found, founded, uh, was with the creation of the video game console, uh, or the arcade cabinet, uh, Pong, which was later created into an at-home video game set. Uh, due to its popularity, uh, they began developing a, the Atari 2600, which was an at-home video game console, a second-generation one that used interchangeable ROM cartridges, and it popularized the use of microprocessor-based hardware for and ROM cartridges for home gaming. And the Atari 2600 came out the same year as the 1977 Trinity of Personal Computers, which was by Tandy, Apple, and Commodore. And this inspired them to work on the Atari 400 and Atari 800, which were later released in 1979. Uh, they were initially supposed to be replacements for, or the replacement for the Atari 2600, but when everyone saw how popular personal home computing was getting, uh, they slapped on a QWERTY keyboard and changed the uh, layout, computer design stuff. And these were the first home computers designed with custom coprocessor chips. Now, in 1980, uh, another popular arcade game was Space Invaders, and it was ported. It was ported to the Atari 2600 and what became the first killer app in video gaming, which quadrupled the sales of the Atari 2600 for that year. And then in 1984, uh, Warner sold the Atari uh, Incorporated to uh, Jack Tremiel of Commodore International and later labeled it as Atari Corporation. And the Atari ST came out in 1985, which was the first personal computer with a bitmapped color GUI. Uh, it was the first home computer with a MIDI port also, which made this computer super popular with musicians, but still it lagged behind other personal computers and didn't sell very well, except for it sold a lot better in Europe than it did in America. In 1989, Atari came out with the Atari Lynx, which was the world's first handheld electronic game with a color LCD, which was quite an accomplishment. Uh, and this came out one month after Nintendo's Game Boy came out, which was a strictly black and white handheld console. Uh, it came out two years before its competitor, the Sega Game Gear, which was another handheld, uh, color handheld. Uh, unfortunately, the Lynx didn't sell well uh, due to its being excessively large and bulky, and the backlit L LCD uh, drained its battery, so it had a really bad, terrible battery life. In 1989, uh, Atari also came out with the Portfolio, which was the world's first palm top, which is basically a computer with a form factor that's smaller than a laptop. And then in 1993, Atari came out with the Jaguar, which was the first 64-bit gaming console and started the fifth generation of gaming. Uh, ultimately, it was a commercial failure because in the ensuing years, the Sega Saturn, PlayStation, and Nintendo 64 came out and were much more popular. Uh, largely, it was due to the Jaguar not being very uh, popular in the beginning, and so it had a hard time finding third-party developers. And this ultimately led to Atari deciding to leave the video game console and electronics business. And uh, uh, Jack Tremiel later sold Atari to uh, JTS in 1996. And then in 1998, it was sold to Hasbro. And since then, it's mostly been used as just a brand name. And this concludes my presentation. I'm Sammy Valencia. Thank you very much.